Hello everyone, uh, I welcome you all to this lecture. In this lecture, we are going to discuss different types of automata. Basically, there are two classifications I have drawn here. So, one type of automaton we consider as finite acceptor, which can accept a set of strings or any language, right? And another category which we consider finite transducer. This finite term define that there will be finite number of states in that one. Okay. And what is acceptor and transducer? Uh, if a given input, we only want to check whether this input is valid according to some restriction or some pattern, we need a formal machine which can either reject or accept the string that we consider as the acceptor. But sometimes we require to perform some different types of tasks. Let's say if you want that there is a binary number given and you want to convert that binary number into its one's complement or maybe into two's complement or there are a number of other tasks you can, you can perform. So if you want to convert and you want output in a specific pattern or manner, then there is another category of automaton that is finite transducers okay so there are two types of finite automaton or you can say finite acceptor which i have written here deterministic and non-deterministic there are two types of automaton which can accept or reject a given input and there are two types of transducers mille machine and more machine so we discuss all these things in detail in this lecture I am going to cover the deterministic and non-deterministic finite automata. Okay. So, what is deterministic and what is non-deterministic behavior of a machine? Now, you assume that, let us say if I consider a calculator, right. So, let us say this is a calculator. This is following an automata, right. Now, what will define its input set or you can say set of alphabet it depends upon what are the options which as a user i can press as input so let's say there are digits 1, 0 1 2 3 till 9 there is double zero also dot also plus multiplication division there are different buttons given on this so if i am a user I have full flexibility to give any input in terms of these buttons. Okay. If this machine is following a deterministic automaton, on whatever the state the machine is, out of these given inputs, if any of the button will be pressed by the user, the machine must be capable enough to deal with that input and need to transit to a well-defined state. It should not be like that. That on this, if I have type, let's say, 1 minus and then I press equal to. And this machine doesn't have any clue what to do now. Because minus is a binary operator, so I didn't pass the next operator. Okay. So, at any given state, for every possible input, if there is a unique transition, then that machine will be considered as finite state machine. Okay. So, there is a set of input which we consider epsilon, uh, which we consider this summation, the set of input, set of alphabet, and this is the set of states. Okay. So, when on any given state for any possible input, if there is a unique mapping of a state, only one state I am saying and this Q is belonging to this Q, set Q only, then we can say this is the deterministic behavior. Okay. So, machine is on any state, any possible input is coming, the machine is transiting to a well-defined state and that is unique. That is the behavior of a deterministic machine. But in non-deterministic machine, this behavior is not fixed. So, on a state, let us say 
a queue when an input is coming there are possibility that this is leading towards two states either q1 or q2 or it is also possible that on a state q if an input is coming it is not leading to any of these states so this is null kind of a state which is which is it is generating so in that case we can say this is the non deterministic behavior of a machine now we can take few examples to have better understanding so let's say i represent an automata in terms of a table in table there are certain number of states states and there are certain inputs so i am considering the set of alphabet for this automaton which i am is i think it is binary 0 1 so 0 and 1 now the initial state i am considering q0 so at q0 when 0 comes the machine lead to let's say q1 and when 1 comes the machine lead to let's say q2 so that means for on q0 for input 0 there is unique state okay one and only one okay for one also there is a unique state q2 that is also one and only one let's say at q1 if zero is coming as input and that q1 is leading towards let's say q2 okay and on q1 when one is coming it is having a self loop so it is coming on q1 itself but then also it is deterministic because there is a unique state it is leading towards for a given input so that is not a problem now if q2 comes let's say q2 is a final state also so i circled it and then q2 leads for both the situation it leads to q2 only so when 0 comes or 1 comes on q2 it is on q2 only. so this automata will look like let's say q0 is there q0 is initial state and when 0 is coming there is let's say q1 and let's say there is q2 q2 is final state so i double circled it for 0 it is leading towards q1 so 0 input for 1 it is leading towards q2 from q1 there is a loop for 1 when 1 comes it is on q1 but for 0 it leads towards q2 on q2 there is a loop for 0 as well as for 1 so this is the automata and this is finite automata which is deterministic this is deterministic automata how we are saying it is deterministic because on every state for every input there is a unique transition defined okay now if i take another automata so let's take another example So if I consider this automata is also having few states, let's say q0, q1, q2, let's say three states it is having again and the set of alphabet is 0 and 1, so it is having two possible inputs, okay. But now the q0 is the initial state and let's say q2 is the final state, okay. Now on Q0, when 0 comes, it is leading towards Q1. When 1 comes, it is leading towards Q1 and Q2 both. So there is a problem. On one state, for one input, there has to be unique transition. But there are two. Or from Q0, when 1 is coming, it is having a transition on Q1 as well as on Q2 with same input 1. So it is non-deterministic behavior, right? Now at Q1, when 0 comes, let's say there is no transition defined. It is not leading towards anything when 0 is coming. So that means it is also a non-deterministic behavior when there is no transition defined or more than one transition defined. In both the cases, we conclude the automata is non-deterministic. Okay? So here, let's say when 1 is coming, it is leading towards Q2. On Q2, let's say, when 0 comes, it is on Q2, and when 1 comes, it is on Q2. 
so this diagram will look like this let's say uh, you have here q0 q0 is the initial state there is q1 and let's say q2 q2 is the final state now look at very carefully on q0 when 0 comes it is leading towards q1 when 1 comes it is leading towards q1 as well as it is leading towards q2 so for one there are two transition towards q1 also and towards q2 also that's why we are writing q1 and q2 both now at q1 there is no transition for zero so there is no transition defined for zero but when one is coming it is leading towards q2 and on q2 there is a loop for zero as well as for one so this is the automata for this given transition table right but this automaton is non-deterministic because for one input one there are two transition and here for one input zero on stage q1 there is no transition defined so if zero transition or multiple transition is defined on any of the state for any given input then the automata will be considered as non-deterministic there are two types of non-deterministic automatas one is we consider like ndfa and another we consider like ndfa with null transitions so epsilon ndfa is also one of the non-deterministic automata so how the ndfa or nfa is different from epsilon nfa in nfa there is no null transition what is the meaning of null transition the meaning of null transition is let's say your automata is on a state so let's say your automata is on a state let's say q0 at q0 no input comes only epsilon or null comes and then also it is transiting the state to q1 although your alphabet is having there are two legal symbols 0 and 1 so neither 0 came nor 1 came then also the state has been changed from q0 to q1 this is considered as null transition okay so if there is any null transition is given in the ndfa then we consider it as epsilon nfa okay so you try to understand the difference between nfa and epsilon nfa and dfa the power of dfa and nfa is equal both have similar power and they are interconvertible nfa can be converted into dfa okay and epsilon nfa can be converted into nfa or epsilon nfa can directly converted into dfa so these conversions are possible this can be converted into this or this can be converted into this or you can convert first thing into this and then you can convert nfa into dfa so later on we will do all these things but in this uh, lecture we are trying to understand the nfa and dfa so that you will be confident now if this automaton is given how you can determine whether whether it is dfa or nfa so if you want to identify this whether it is deterministic automata or non-deterministic you need to identify with in same manner like if i try to draw the transition table there are two input symbols a and b so i am considering a here b here initial state is a so i am taking a as the initial state now from a when a is coming it is leading towards b but for b there is no transition so it is phi or empty null right so there is no transition for b that means it is an nfa non-deterministic finite automata it is not dfa because in dfa for every input on every state there has to be unique one and only one transition so yahan pe zero transition hai. so if there is zero transition that means it is nfa okay so from b it is fine so from b let's say when a is coming it is on b only when b is coming it is on b only. so there is a unique transition now if we want to convert this nfa into dfa we need to have some another state 
So if I draw, let's say uh, there is C state if I draw. And let's say when B is coming, it is leading towards C. And I put the arrow from B and A to C only. Now this automata, we can say this is deterministic because now this transition table will modify a bit. So from A when B is coming, it is leading towards C. So now it is not blank. There is a unique transition. And if I write for C, for, e, for A or B, both there is a unique transition I have defined. That is to C only. So that means now it is converted into, now this automata is converted into DFA. So this is deterministic finite automata. Earlier it was NFA when the C state was not there. Okay. So I hope this will help you to understand the difference between DFA and, and NFA, right? In next lecture, we will take few more examples and solve few problems from gate exam. Thank you everybody for connecting. See you in the next class.